and you can see the live stream looks pretty good, even though these are just iPod touches. And you know, I'm just using light stands here, not even tripods because they're so small. There's some logos, you can add graphics up right here. Um, let me see, let me cut back to my view here. Yeah, so <clears throat> someone's asking about graphics. There's a graphics tab up here. So you can add some graphics or you can you can add your own graphics as well. We'll go back to video sources. I'll probably stick with the behind the scenes. You guys already know what it looks like um, from the views. It looks pretty good. I don't have a lot of battery life left right now. I've been testing it out all day. But this is really your multi-camera production studio right here. iPad, Sling Studio. Again, this is battery powered, so it's really cool. You can throw this in your backpack. And then we have just iPod touches here. Um, if you guys didn't see what I did, I have these uh, Mophie cases for the iPhone 5. I've uh, added stylus grip, and I put microphones on there in case I want to use audio from those sources. Again, all I have to do is uh, click on the audio sources up here on the top, turn them on or off. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, wait. So someone says you can't hear the audio when I switch. Um, that's my bad. My setting here. So on this iPod, it says AFV, audio follows video. So I, I have that on, which is incorrect. Let me lock this down. So what I need to do is to keep this on before I switch. I'm going to click on. There you go. So now when I cut angles, that will stay on. So I, I'm, I've disabled audio follows video and I'm using on. So that was my bad. I'm sorry. Okay, so let me show you. I'll, I'll cut to the different angles again. Here, here, and here. And the audio should carry now. So even, even if I'm th at this angle, um, you should hear my audio here. You should hear my audio and here. And then we'll cut back to my view. Um, so yeah, that's my bad. I'm sorry. I, as I was cutting, I guess the audio was cutting out because I didn't have this set up properly. This is always on. And then there's an AFV setting, which is audio follows video, which you want to have if you're going to you know, use the audio from the different camera angles. Um, otherwise, you just leave that on all the time. So super simple to set up, um, really lightweight and portable, but let's cut to the different angles again and just show you uh, the, you know, the, the view because it's not bad from an iPod. Now two of these iPods, uh, this angle here as well as this angle here is zoomed in. so. We're not getting the best quality because, you know, we're using digital zoom. Um, but this one here is the wide view, and that looks okay. So you can see the quality of an iPod using Sling Studio. Also, Sling Studio, um, you set up your project settings. So in the project settings, you could, you could see what you're, you're set to, and um, mine is set to lower bit rate as well as uh, lower resolution. We're streaming at 72030. Uh, so that that's probably why we're we're not getting as much uh, clarity on YouTube as well, but um, it's pretty decent. So the stream is uh, pretty steady. Um, pretty consistent. I've used uh, this on Sling Studio. I've used Sling Studio a number of times and uh, once you get going it doesn't seem to fall off. I've never really had any like dropouts or anything. Sometimes setting it up is a, a little tricky like 
Um, the Sling Studio Hub here, you have to connect all your devices to this, but this also has to connect to the Wi-Fi network if you want to stream. And sometimes it, it didn't see my Wi-Fi network, so I had to reboot it. And then after rebooting it, it saw my local network so I could stream out to the internet. Otherwise, it does turn on and I can get all my devices connected to it. Um, so what I could do too is I could hit record here. And this is actually going to record my program feed. As I switch to the different camera angles, um, my recording will record the program feed. Now, I could, let me stop, oh, before I stop the recording, under your project settings, you could select what you want to record. So you could do program, which is uh, the main feed that you guys are watching, like the live stream. And then I could also do the video sources. So by choosing video sources, I'm actually recording all the feeds that are happening on all four devices that are connected. So if we look here, I have four devices. Three are the static camera angles and one is, you know, my BTS here. And as I'm recording, I'm actually recording all the feeds and it gets saved to a SD card within the Sling Studio here, which I don't want to eject right now. Um, if you want to record something bigger, they do have a USB, uh, Type-C USB extension for external hard drives. So that will work as well. Once again, I'll cut back to the iPods. You guys can see, doesn't look too bad for a quick setup. Can it record and stream? It can record in 1080 um, and 60 frames, yes but uh, streaming is not going to be very stable um, depends on your upload your Wi-Fi network like you really have to have a, a good network to do 1080 60 uh, so if you as a safe bet 720 30 is good 720 60 is decent most streams are done like that now this um, if you guys don't know this can stream to Facebook or YouTube right now and I think they're going to add some other updates so you can support other uh, streaming services and RTMP, custom RTMP servers. But right now it's just Facebook and YouTube. Cut back to the uh, camera angles here. See what he's drawing. All right, so it seems to be working real well. I just wanted to test this. Uh, I have these iPod touches going here and I've been wanting to, you know, just kind of put them to use, see what the quality is like. Also have an example to show people, um, you know, what an iPod can do, I guess, which is great for the smaller setups. So I'm going to cut out of this uh, live stream now, but uh, this was my test. Just wanted to see how well it worked out, and I think uh, Sling Studio works. Very, very easy to operate. All you have to do is launch the app on each one of these uh, phones. Sling Studio here. Give you a couple hours of runtime. My iPods will give us a couple hours of runtime. Uh, I'll show you guys what the app looks like. You just launch it from here. As long as you're connected to the uh, Wi-Fi network, to the Sling Studio, because Sling Studio will create its own Wi-Fi. You connect this device to the Wi-Fi, then you launch the app, and that's it. And then it shows up right here. So this is the camera that we're playing with. That guy right there. So we're connected again. So yeah, super easy to set up. As you can see, I'm just using light stands, no tripods. You can zoom in and out. I've added battery cases. These red battery cases here give me some extra battery life. As you can see, my battery's still full. And then the uh, stylus grip here. 
That gives me a cold shoe mount and a tripod mount. The Wi-Fi range, someone is asking, is supposed to be 300 feet, which is like, you know, like your wireless router setup. But the, uh, it depends on your device. You know, an iPod doesn't have the best Wi-Fi hardware, whereas an iPhone may be better. But they also have a camera link adapter. Let me show you that. So this is the Sling Studio camera link adapter over here. And if you have an HDMI cable plugged into this, this will also stream back to the, to the uh, hub here, and then it'll show up as one of your feeds. So you need to have that if you want like the longest range. Again, it depends on the device that you're using. I think 100 feet is pretty safe, even in a crowded environment. The zoom in and out. Uh, from an iPod, let me show you. <laughs> That's me doing it really fast. I guess I could do it. The autofocus is not that good, though. So that's from an iPod. You probably want to use a camera if you plan on doing a lot of zooms. As far as static camera angles, locking the exposure, locking the focus, I think uh, iPods work well for that. You can certainly just add an iPod as like your supplemental camera, maybe not your main camera. So anyways, um, that's it. I'm about to cut out. Hopefully you guys got a good look at this demo and uh, hopefully I answered some of your questions here. Uh, there's a lot going on to Sling Studio, which makes it really nice. I'll, I'll show you, for instance, if I wanted to click on my health meter here, I could see the status on all of my um, devices connected. So here, my iPod Touch, my BTS one that I'm using right now, is at 14%. It also tells you the connection quality back to the hub uh, is pretty good there. Let me lock this focus. Um, you could see our video production settings here or 72030p, our output bit rate and our video source bit rate, which we're recording, our internet connectivity, and then um, how much time we have remaining in our storage here, uh, which is uh, 43 hours. That's a small card, but we're only recording 72030 at 2.5 megabits, so uh, very small file. So we'll go back here. This is the main, the main page. Um, you could change the preview here if you wanted to. We could do split view, quad view. Depends on uh, how you want to work your console. I like to see the audio mixer. And as you can see, I'm actually looking at my uh, smartphone here, watching the live stream, and looking at the comments as well. We'll cut back to the iPod real quick before I cut out of here. Just so I can look at this video later and just see how it is. And to cut out, I'm just gonna press this go live here and I'm gonna stop my live.